Okay, we're going to continue to to calculate uh, the length of sides in right angle triangles. And to start with, um, if I have a right angle triangle, um, and they give me two sides, and they ask me what is the length of the third one, we have a very useful method, which we call Pythagoras theorem, which you should already be familiar with, that a squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And the hypotenuse is that side on the other side of the 90 degree angle, yeah? so across the 90, 90 degrees angle, and just have a proper look. In this case, that is my x squared. Yeah, and then I can fill in a and b. It doesn't really matter if I say 4 squared plus 3 squared or 3 squared plus 4 squared, as long as you take a moment to really make sure you have the hypotenuse correct. We can work it out, 16, 3 plus 3 times 3 is 9, and that equals x squared. And if I just continue here, 16 plus 9, that would be 25 is x squared. That makes x the square root of 25, and that equals 2, 5. So they give me two lengths, or two sides, in a right angle triangle. Pythagoras theorem will always... Um, yeah, enable me to calculate the third side in a right angle triangle. All right. But now sometimes, again, we're still talking about right angle triangles, but sometimes they only give me one length, like in this particular case. They ask me, yeah, what is the length of x? They say, well, that side is 5, but they do not give me the hypotenuse. They don't give me the length of the hypotenuse. Yeah? So Pythagoras is not going to help me. Because 5 squared plus x squared equals, yeah, how much squared? Yeah? I will not be able to solve that. However, they give me another piece of information. They say that this particular angle is 20 degrees. Now, if I am given a right angle triangle, a length and an angle, I can also always calculate the other sides. And I'll show you now how. That's, you do that with trigonometry. And although I'm not going to explain the whole concept of trigonometry, I'm just going to show you now, because I've, I'll do that in another video, but this is just how to apply it. Now, before you start, you always write down those ratios at the top of the paper, otherwise you might mess them up. And different books, different teachers use a different order, but I always write down Toa, Ka, Sol. Yeah, but perhaps you write it in a different order, a ka, so, toa, or whatever. Yeah, so you do what you have learned. Yeah, but hopefully you realize now that it is the tangents that is the opposite of the adjacent. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, if I place myself physically in that corner they give me, so I'm standing in that 20 degree corner. Then I have three sides, and I just want to, um, in, for this particular example, draw it a little bit bigger for you. So, this is the situation, if that's just a sketch, 90 degrees, we said 5x, and this is 20 degrees, this angle is 20 degrees. I'm standing in my angle, then I have three sides. I have this side, I have this side, and I have that side. And with trigonometry, it's really important that you determine the names for the particular sides, because you already are familiar with the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. We call that always the longer side of a right angle triangle, yeah, which is the side across the angle of 90 degrees. Yeah? That is always the hypotenuse. So for any right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse. But we have two other sides, yeah? this one and that one. And they are either, so it can change, the adjacent or the opposite. Now, nah. And that depends on where you are standing, in which corner you are. If I am sitting in my 20 degree corner, the adjacent is that side that is next to me, that is touching me. Now, if I'm standing here, of course I have two sides touching me. However, this is the hypotenuse. That makes this side the adjacent. So if you like, the red side 
in this particular case would be the adjacent. Now what is the opposite? The opposite is always that side that is yeah, opposite of me, yeah, across me. It's not touching me. So in this particular case, that would be, excuse me, that will be my X. Yeah? That is the side in the right angle triangle that is opposite of me. Now, that may change because if this is a right angle triangle, 90 degrees, that one is 20, that automatically makes this angle 180 minus 90 minus 20, which is 70 degrees. Now, if I would be standing in that particular angle, the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse will never change. However, now my adjacent will be x. It's touching me, it's next to me, and my opposite is 5. It's not touching me. Yeah? So you always, when you are working with trigonometry, really have to physically place yourself in that angle. Which side is opposite of me? Which side I don't see? Yeah? Which side is, sorry, is not touching me? Yeah? It's on the other side of the river, if you like. Yeah? You can draw a little river here. If I'm standing in my 20 degrees angle, that makes X opposite of the river. Five is my adjacent. Now back to the question. If I'm standing in my angle, what do they know? What do they give me? They give me my opposite. They give me my adjacent. Then I look for the correct ratio. Which one has opposite and adjacent? Well, the cosine has adjacent hypotenuse. The sine has opposite hypotenuse. But the tangent has the opposite and the adjacent, the opposite and adjacent. So that is the ratio for this question I need to use. So I write down the tan of 20 degrees. And that ratio is always immediately followed by your angle, 20 degrees. And that equals my opposite x divided by my adjacent, 5. And if I rearrange that, that equation, because I want to find out how much x is, then it really you approach it as any other equation. Yeah, so you times, in this case, both sides by 5, left and right, to get rid of that fraction there. So 5 times the tangents of 20 degrees, uh, 5 times of 20 degrees that would equal x now we need a calculator for that yeah so you have a calculator with you yeah so I press the tangents of 20 equals and they give me this decimal 0 0.36397023443 but I still got to times that by 5 equals and then to three significant figures yeah so let me let me give you um, let me give you all the numbers, I'll, I'll put it here, otherwise I won't have enough space in a minute. It's x equals um, 1.81985 and a few more, but three significant figures, so it's 1.81, but the one will go up to a 2, because your fourth significant figure, uh, so the first one you're not writing, is a 5 or higher. So in this case, the tangents, was a ratio we could use to find that missing length x. All right. Now, if I just put a little line here, because it's getting a little bit messy now, I apologize for that. Uh, but let's have a look here. We have 58 degrees. So I'm standing in my angle, and I'm thinking, what do they know? What do they give to me? Yeah, well, I want to find out x. It's a right angle triangle. I know the hypotenuse, yeah, but I don't know that side. So I can't use Pythagoras. Uh, because Pythagoras, if you can use it, always use it. 58 degrees. I want to find out my opposite. They give to me my hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse, that's the sine. So I write down the sine of 58 degrees equals, yeah, the sine, the ratio immediately followed by the angle, in this case 58. Opposite, which is x over 12. Yeah, rearrange that formula, yeah, multiply both sides by 12 to get rid of that fraction, and yeah? multiply it by the denominator times 12, both sides, yeah, so I'm getting 12 times the sine of 58 degrees, yeah, that will equal x. Now, 
we have our calculator for that. We do not need to know all those ratios of different triangles. Our calculator has got it all stored inside. Uh, so sometimes really it is our friend. Not always, by the way. I'm pressing in sine 58 equals. And they're giving me this decimal as 0 0.84804809625. Fantastic. Times that by 12 equals. And then it tells me, and I'll write them all down, 10.17657715. Yeah. Now, three significant figures. Yeah. One, two, three, a one. Does it stay in one? Does it go up to a two? It depends on the next one. It's a five or higher. So yes, it goes to a two. 10.2. Now, that is fantastic. Considering the hypotenuse is 12, and the hypotenuse is always the longest side and a right angle triangle. Yeah, so X really should be smaller than 12, which it is, so that all makes sense. Now I'm going to stop with this video now and I will continue with a new video with more examples for you. Alright, all the best.